fuck you are just run away from it run mm-hmm. away from it because uh you know like a lot of middlemen you know like are gonna get burnt in the process you know and uh, I, you know i still so i don't know whether this was the head of the snake when it comes to this uh to this you know like to this corruption uh of the on this case i don't know that this was the head of the snake no, but uh, but uh but but this was big. no it, it, it's it's not it's not it's not even big the way uno is trying to make it big <laughs> Mixed. It's been a mixed week in Kenya, you know, some wins and some L's. Uh, you know, so Kirinyaga Governor Anne Waiguru, uh, who was facing impeachment uh, from her MCS uh, back in Kirinyaga County, uh, was acquitted uh, by the Senate. Um, and, um, and you know, the Senate gave, you know, a reasoning that... Uh, whatever offenses that uh, the MCS from Kirinyaga County had brought forth were not impeachable offenses. So, And, of course, the Senate has that power to veto impeachment that, uh, that's coming from the county. So far, we've had only one governor who was impeached, and that was uh, Kiambu Governor Babayao, Ferdinand Waititu. You know, there had been an attempt to, uh, to impeach Governor Wambora in, um, in Embu. There had been an attempt to impeach Governor Samboja, in uh, Taita Taveta County, and there had also been an attempt to impeach our beloved Kivuta Kibwana, who also announced he's running for president. But that's a topic for another day. There was an at- there was an attempt to impeach him, but that did not even get off the ground. So again, you know, like Governor Waiguru is once again free. But also this week, uh, Sirisi, a member of Parliament, John Waluke, was sentenced to ten years in jail or pay a fine of over 700 million shillings. And this is according to Citizen. Now, Citizen said, you know, the Sirisia member of parliament uh, has been sentenced to to 10 years in prison or 727 million for defrauding the National Cereals and Produce Board, uh, 313 million shillings. Now, the MP was charged alongside Grace Wahungu, who was also handed a 10-year jail term, or pay a fine of just uh, 707 million. Uh, Waluki and Mahungu through the company was supposed to supply 40,000 metric tons of maize to the National Cereals and Produce Board back in 2004, but ended up pocketing 313 million shillings without supplying maize, even a single grain of maize. Now, the tender was, however, cancelled after Erad supplies a company in which the late businessman Jacob Juma was also a director, failed to prove it had sufficient funds to supply the maize. The company later moved to court and sued NCPB, claiming that uh, by the time the tender was being cancelled, it already had the maize uh, procured from Ethiopia and that it was being stored by Chelsea Freight, a South African farm in uh, Djibouti. So they claimed the maize was stored by the South African farm in Djibouti for a period of 123 days, for which they were charged uh, 1.14 million US dollars and they anticipated profiting uh, profits amounting to uh, 1.9 million um, 1.9 million US dollars so quite you know like quite a week it has been uh, and and this of course came as a shocker a lot of people felt like this is just going to be the routine procedure they're going to get you know like uh, some slaps on the wrist and they're going to move on but this this was very, very explosive. I mean, you know, like... Uh, Game the, changer. Yeah, the work between uh, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission led by Twalib Mbarak and the Office of the DPP, of course, uh, led by Nurdin Haji. Uh, this is a great job, you know, like we have to give credit where credit is due. You know, so the judiciary has sentenced. I mean, of course, this is going to go through an appeal. So I think there's still skepticism out there because we don't know what's going to happen in the appeals process. But uh, but this is where we are, you know, like this was dating back in 2004. And this conviction, they used uh, a law called the Anti-Corruption Act, which mm-hmm. actually stipulates that uh, when, when it's been proven, you know, like uh, that there was monetary value in that uh, corruption that you committed, there was monetary gain, you're required to pay... I think double. it was double that amount. Double, double. Yes. 
Yeah, so these laws are there in the book, they are just not being affected. Uno, talk to me about this. Uh, what do you think? What do you feel about this? Is this a game changer or is this just an exception? This is a game changer. You do you remember Amuti, the first, the first, the uh, Amuti who was uh, who had tried to go to the Supreme Court to fight to fight uh, the case of how uh, how he acquired his wealth because he could not explain it, and then the Supreme Court. Kick told him, boss, you simply have to show how you acquired this wealth. Take this back to the high court and answer those charges. But now this one, this one is also a game changer because, because initially what had happened, I don't know if you guys had followed this story. Initially, they Aaron had actually sued National Serious and Produce Board. And they had actually won. They go to an arbitrator. Arbitrator give, uh, gives them uh, orders affirming that they, you know, using using the forged, forged documents that, you know, of course they found out that they were forged, but those documents to fight NCPB and they got, they got money. They were, uh, I think it was up to, uh, for 500 and something. And now the roles have, have, have reversed, but this is huge. This is so huge because uh, it also shows that if there's no, political, there's really no political interference. You let the judiciary do its job. You let the law, the constitution do its job. This is what, these are the results that you can get or you're going to get. These are the results that you're going to get. And these guys were methodical. Uh, they were, they were, they were, they were, they actually step by step. I was listening to uh, the assistant ESCC director talking about how uh, for them it was a process, you know, like trying to get information from South Africa, uh, saying that, you know, so there's some crimes in South Africa that would not be considered a crime, but in Kenya they are crimes. So you have to go through those legal hurdles and le legal loopholes to get the information that you need. But my friend, this is a game changer. Five, almost 770 something million in fines or and I think, and I think, what was not stipulated was whether the 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 the, 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 the jail sentences would run concurrently if he's or he if, if they are unable to pay. So, boss, you're looking at probably sixty-two years. Yeah, for both. I, you know that that was not very clear, and of course, it wasn't you know, clear. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, the standard newspaper, you know, like ran with with the headline of that maximum possible sentence that they could get. But I think clarity needs to be given on exactly what period it is. I, I would think that it's uh, it's concurrent uh, because, I mean, 62 years, that would be crazy. And, and the unfortunate part, the other person involved uh, in the corruption was uh, Grace Wakungu, who's uh, almost 80 years old, you mm -hmm. know, which is, which is very unfortunate. This is why I always keep telling people Whenever you have a friend or a colleague, you know, like talks about a deal and you're not fully understanding it and the money looks too good to be true, no matter how broke you are, just run away from it. Run mm -hmm. away from it because, uh, you know, like a lot of middlemen, you know, like are going to get burnt in the process, you know. And, uh, you know, I still, so I don't know whether this was the head of the snake when it comes to this uh to this, you know, like to this corruption uh, of the on this case, I don't know that this was the head of the snake, no, but uh, but uh, but but this was big. no, it, it, it's it's not it's not it's not even big the way Una is trying to make it big. Ali, if Jacob Juma was was alive and this was his company being uh, put into this case, because he would have been uh, also one of the people who have been charged with this case. This case would have been put in that had political interference, as Uno says. Because you know Jacob Juma is a big political contributor on both sides. So another thing we need to think about is how many corruption cases have we had in the past? Uh, how many seven years of this government? How many have we had that clearly evidence is there that shows this was a corruption case and we know who was guilty of that and nothing happened? Why? Because of political interference. Just because we have this one case, whereby those who were being accused of that case, there was no, there was no political leader who was, there was no political leader who was being on the spot because of this case. This was just an MP, an MP who even if they lost their seat can be replaced by somebody else 
who isn't a game changer who is anything nobody none of the top people what were uh, tribal henchmen were there were, were linked to this case and so that it could, it could affect the polit- uh, the political landscape of a region or of uh, say the whole country so yes the, we have an ESCC who have been accused of being what an entity that's wasting money because they are charging people are not winning cases. They get their first win. The ESCC that the president wants to show it to win so that he can show on his legacy he's beating corruption cases. This is not a win. This is nothing big. This is meat. As you said in the first story, he akuna kitu hapa. I disagree with you, but... No, I disagree with you, no. That's fine. We'll we'll agree to disagree. Mika, I I think you have some... There's some merit to what you say, but the the thing that is different with this case is, unlike other cases, we actually had a conviction, right? Now... And I agree with that. the, the The other thing about this case is... If you look at the breakdown of how the monies were taken and where the monies were taken from and who received the money, blah, blah, blah. There is about a hundred and something million which was which went to one person and it was it all they said it was a client. They didn't mm-hmm. they didn't say unspecified client, not client, yep. unspecified client, and it was a hundred and something million. Who mm-hmm. is this unspecified client? And I hate to speculate. I have two theories of who this unspecified could be. No, ingekuwa ni mwenye unajaribu kufikiria, hii kesi haingefika mahali. No, nasema nafikiria kuna watu wawili and I think I know but you see the thing this case they had to we they had to be a big case for corruption that had to be prosecuted to make Gava look like they actually yes, had and that's what I'm saying. Job, right? So if this was that case then even if ilikuwa ule mse nasema jumi nafikiria nafikiri kuna it's one of two people either ni arab mashamba ama it's uncle mudi and the only reason why i say uncle mudi because grace is his sister so e story vile aliingililia nani alimweka you, you understand where i'm no no kwambia hii hii ni kesi ya ilitokea from 204 204 ili ili kwa government gani which government was 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 at that time kibak is government Yes. Kibaki is government. At that yes. time ilikuwa and on all these people who are now in Gava. Right? And let's say is Pukua Ruto, we're all in government. Yes, 